Hi, good to be back here again. Right, well as you can see I've now got a tripod for uh, my camera so things hopefully will be a bit better. I can do a few better videos and also my video, I can do my videos a bit more regularly because it, you don't know what a hassle it is to try and find something to prop a camera up having an actual tripod which I've at last invested in which thank God um, we can uh, have some better videos and hopefully I won't lose my lines and forget what I'm supposed to say. Anyhow, today we're uh, going on from the unboxing of the Netgear ReadyNAS unit that I unboxed in a previous video um, and now we're going, I'm going to give you a bit more of a look at it and a bit more of a slight review of it and my general thoughts um, and feelings on it. So if you're ready we'll have a look at it. Okay so here is the ReadyNAS unit, oops and my light has gone i just try and uh, put my light back a bit. This is the um, Netgear NAS unit in situ next to uh, my computer. Um, as you see, it's uh, a very nice looking little box here um, with the door, I hope I'm not, yeah, with the door that opens here. And as you can see, I've got two um, drive units sitting in the bay there. It sits quite nicely on the desk. Um, if I try and zoom back a bit, oh, sorry for me, uh, a bottle, take that away. Now if I zoom back a bit and you can see it fits in quite nicely with the rest of the system. Okay, it's um just get make sure um it's a very small system. Um it has as you can see it has one blue light there. I don't know if that's coming out on the video as blue, but it's a blue light um and three um green lights and um, which the blue light is the power light um and the three green lights um, they show which drives are in use at the moment, if any data is going to the unit or not, um, and so forth. Um, as um, you, well, you probably don't know, but um, my sort of home office place um, is actually in my bedroom. And um, if you can see, I have um, on top of the um, NAS unit, I have a switch which obviously connects it to the rest of the network. As it's my bedroom and I've got enough flashing lights in this bedroom anymore, this blue light is extremely bright. I mean it nearly it nearly light, lights up the whole room at night. At night. So um, that, that uh, is a bit annoying. I think, I'm not sure, but I think you can switch that off um, through the software that comes with the unit. Um, as a la last resort there, of course, you could um, type it, I suppose. Um, other than that, it's very, very quiet. I mean, you can hear fans, but I think that's more my PC than anything. It has got a fan in the back of it. Um, but that is not very loud at all, except when it first starts up. When it first starts up, then it's, uh, it's a whoosh, uh, like a wind tunnel. Um, but then, it, within a minute or so, it quietens down. Um, and it's very, very quiet and unobtrusive, and you really wouldn't notice it's there. Even, um, especially with the drives that I've got in there, which are the uh, Western Digital Red to Western Digital Red 3 terabyte drives. Um, there's hardly any sound for it, so that is a very good, very good point. It's a nice um, workmanlike unit, fits in nice with most um, spaces, very, very office y like, but goes well with a desktop computer. So, as far as how it looks, um, 
um, I personally am uh, quite satisfied and think it looks quite nice and is quite well part of the uh, setup of the unit and setup of the whole system. Okay, hi, right, well this is the software, the screen and the software that you get with the Netgear NAS unit. Um, this is the uh, front page. Um, sorry for the low quality of the picture but I'm just recording straight from the screen. Um, as you can see here, down this side um, we have all the options of being able to um, control the NAS unit. The first one here um, is the network so you can adjust your network interfaces. Um, you have two Ethernet um, ports inside the um, NAS unit so um, it can actually be used on two separate um, networks. Uh, usual stuff, your interfaces, global settings, uh, uh, WinS and D DHCP settings. Um, here, just your security password, your admin password for security, and also user groups and stuff like that if you want to set up user groups. I don't really bother setting up user groups because, well, there's only me that uses it really, so. Um, services, right, you have the um, different file pro protocols. You have um, the SIFS protocol. Um, I won't go really go through these things very fast. Uh, I'll go through these things very fast and um, and you'll have to check out Google if you want more information on the various things. But um, SIFS is the main one to use um, if you have Windows or um, um, a Mac um, OS and also if you have uh, a Linux OS then it will um, be used as, as SMB, it's the same sort of thing as far as I'm aware. Uh, NFS, which specifically, um, specifically for Unix, Linux and Mac. Um, the Apple filing system FTP, which isn't used very often. HTTP, so you can use it straight from a web page. Um, HTTPS um, for secure web page uh, rsync. Um, you can um, stream stuff straight from this unit straight to a DNLA ready um, media player or device just by clicking there and then showing the uh, share folders. Um, you can also uh, connect it to an, as, use it as an iTunes streaming server. Um, a discovery service, so for Mac OS. Uh, the Bonjour service it can use, it can also use unplug and play. Volume settings tells you how much disk space you've got, your RAID configuration, um, a volume uh, management for uh, maintenance, for maintaining um, the disks um, at regular intervals, and iSCSI, um, we, and because I haven't got iSCSI uh, and never really looked into it, I don't know that much about it really. Okay, and the next thing here is the USB storage settings. Um, this has got um, one USB 3 um, socket on the front and two USB 2 sockets on the front. Now, this can be um, to be automatically shared on your network and you can also back up as uh, far as I'm aware to and from the USB flash device um, and the options are there. These are so that you can list all the shares, all the shared uh, folders that you have on your disk um, and what security settings and so forth here um, that you want to do um, set to them. We, there, this is where you add shares. This is the backup jobs. Now, <coughs> sorry, this is the one big problem. I can't use it. I really just could not get it, get to use it. Um, and the, the documentation um, and the manuals and all the help for it, for this 
isn't really that great, it isn't really that obvious and I certainly couldn't make head or tail so um, I'm using other um, backup programs on my PCs on this big PC here which is running Arch Linux um, I use um, Lucky Backup and on my laptop I um, can't remember offhand what the program is but it's another backup um, program that's set to automatically um, back up and synchronize my various uh, files and folders at certain times. Um, it works perfectly with those. Um, the, the NAS unit, um, but yeah, as far as the NAS unit's own backup system is concerned, um, yeah. I mean, it's been a bit, it's uh, completely useless as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, maybe you might have better luck I was with it. I certainly haven't seen, and when I uh, was looking at reviews myself, um, I certainly um, did not see that um, it was a problem or people had said it was a problem. So it was quite surprising that I found it so difficult to use.